YouTube, Chosen a Barber here with another video for you guys. I know, I know uh, we've had a wait for this one. I do apologize. At the end of the day, we are human and shit happens, but we here. And today we have a low drop skin fade for you guys. So as you can see, our first guideline, we started off with our outliner guideline using our detachable blade and i like to start my low drop fades at the nape of the neck um typically below the occipital bone and that just depends on the shape of the client's head and then i'll take that line and i'll bring it up around the ear on both sides of the head and for me that just helps keeps everything balanced and even now the next guideline we're laying in is our OA guideline, our second guideline using our OA detachable blade. And this guideline or this blade is equivalent to if you're using an adjustable clipper to, to the clipper all the way open. And I'm using that same OA uh, blade um, on the top of the beard as well. So if we're fading in the beard, I'll uh, copy the same steps that we're doing on the hair or the head as well to the uh, top of the beard if that's being faded in. Typically it is, so I'm just copying the same steps, just trimming that mustache down, getting everything even and, and, and uh, even and clean. I like to use my comb kind of as a shield to protect from any flyaway hairs flying up into the client's face. Third guideline we land in is our one and a half using our one and a half blade again on our detachable clipper. Um, most times, most barbers, most tutorials that you'll see, a lot of barbers uh, use their um, adjustable clippers for the bulk of the haircut, if not all of it. For me personally, this is just my personal taste, my own personal preference. Um, and I and I picked this up a lot from Kenny Duncan, but um, he has a philosophy. At the end of the day, your tools were made and built for specific things. So you want to use those tools for what they were built for so i like to use i like to think of my adjustable clippers as a center on a basketball team or a running back on a football team or a power forward on the football i mean basketball team however you want to look at it but this is the workhorse this is the workhorse this is the clipper that's going to do the bulk of the heavy lifting and um i use this clipper to establish my foundation i lay my foundation in i like to break break my haircuts down into into three steps uh, the cutting process, the fading process, and the blending process. Um, so this is the, the, the cutting process. I'm, I'm establishing the, the foundation, laying the guidelines for which the rest of my haircut is going to be built on. Um, and now we are fading. Uh, this is the next step in my in my process the fading process or the blend however you want to mix it up if you consider it fading if you consider it blending doesn't really matter cut fade blend that's how i look at it um i'm fading my outliner or my outliner blade guideline or my ball guideline i'm fading that into my oa guideline using my jrl fresh fade clipper the good thing about this clipper, just like uh, the Babyless FX, is they have notches on the side that click into place. So that way you're able to just easier, just keep track of where you are, keep track of your placement. And so this is what I use to fade from my ball guideline into my OA. I'll start with the clipper closed. I'll typically use the whole blade at the very start of that line. And then as I'm going up toward that one and a half guideline, I'm going to notch the clipper, the lever, all the way up until about the fourth notch. And from clipper closed to open, I'm gradually using 
lighter pressure i'm using a, a, a more feathery touch and then i'm also using the corners of my blade so um again at the very bottom of my guideline i'm typically using the whole blade and as i'm going up toward that one and a half i'm using a lighter touch a more feathery touch and i'm just blending into that one and a half As you can see, I'm consistently combing or brushing. Again, keeping the canvas clean. Focusing on what I'm doing. As you can see, I'm just using the corners of my blade. Again, starting from the clipper closed uh, to the clipper on the fourth notch position right up under that one and a half guideline you do not want to go into that one and a half guideline you want to keep your work um in that oa area now that we switch your clippers we are going to our andis master um with our double magnetic zero purple guard by andis as well and we are fading from our OA blade into our one and a half blade using this clipper um, closed and halfway open. And again, as you can see, I'm using the corners of my blade. And with the guard being the way it is, it forces me to use the corners of the blade because if I didn't, I would be cutting small patches in, uh, in the client's head pretty much with, with each pass. So this zero guard, missing teeth the way it is, actually is beneficial for me. Um, you know, just making sure I continue to use the corners of my blade. Uh, breaking my haircuts down into sections also helps me again keep track of the haircut just to make sure I'm not blending too high up or 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 doing anything I'm not supposed to do it keeps me on track it keeps me organized a lot of barbers they like to fade down they like to cut from the top down and again Everybody has their own techniques, their own styles, their own reasonings. For me personally, fading down to start, I feel like I will lose track of where I'm at. So breaking these haircuts down the way I do helps me keep track of where I am. Um, you know, and if I do happen to make a mistake, all I have to do is kind of retrace my steps. I'm just fading in the top of that beard using the one uh, double magnetic purple gar on my Andis Master, and I'm fading between the clipper all the way open and the clipper closed. As you can see, I'm I'm angling the clipper um, in different positions, either angling the back of the clipper up higher, um, turning the clipper sideways. All of these different angles and positions will help you achieve different lengths. Um, the angling of the clipper itself, uh, whether up or down, I learned that technique from Tariq Jackson. Um, great barber, phenomenal barber. I've been following him for some years. So again, if you want to learn that technique more in depth, I would go back to the source.
and I'm following the same steps, uh, fading the top of the beard as I would fading and blending a haircut as well. So here we're just doing some detail work with our wall legend. The reason why I use the wall legend is because it has a fade blade on it. And so this is what we're using to detail. This clipper I only use to detail or to take down bulk if I have a, a client with the afro or a hot tub feed, something of the sort. Um, but other than that, this clipper I only use for detail work and I will detail um, everything from ball guideline all the way up until the length on top using clipper over comb. So as you can see, I have this clipper completely turned to the side and this particular technique I learned from Kenny Duncan. Um, and again, if you want to, you know, go more in depth about that technique in particular and the, and the ins and outs and the specifics, um, you can go straight to the source. But the idea is that when you turn that clipper to the side, it uh, essentially changes the, the the blade set. So where if the clipper open, it, where if this clipper is a one uh, OA open flat against the client's head if you turn it to the side and you're using you're just using one or two teeth then you may be changing it to a one don't quote me on those numbers um you know i'm just i'm just guesstimating here i'm just giving you guys a scenario but essentially turning the clipper on its side like that gives you uh, just more room to play with basically at the end of the day and again we're detailing using the corners of our blade with the lever closed halfway open all the way open I'm detailing in the dark spots that I may see pulling the skin making sure I hold the client's ear out of the way as well And I'm getting, I'm, I'm really attacking at this point. I'm attacking the transition from the OA into the one and a half blade. And uh, that was clipper over comb using a fade comb or a blend comb, wider tooth. I typically uh, start, and this is, I that is basically me removing bulk. I'm basically just removing bulk, um, clearing my path for more detail work. And uh, important with drop fades, when you're using clipper over comb, uh, again, you just wanna make sure that the angle of that comb is, that you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to the angle of that comb. You wanna make sure that um, as you're taking down that bulk, as you're blending into that length on top, that you're holding, that you're still holding the comb in the shape that the fade is going. It's a drop fade, so there's a curvature to it. So as you're blending, you wanna make sure that you're holding that comb you kind of want to you're holding that comb at a compound angle basically so you're holding that comb at an angle on <laughs> the 
the shape of the head but then you also want to angle it out away from the head as to not cut into the shape of the hair so um yeah you just want to be con um, cognizant of your angles how you're holding your clipper how you're holding your comb And with clipper over comb, uh, you want to be careful. You don't have to rush. You don't need to rush. You don't need to move super fast. Um, you definitely want to take your time because, again, this is an area where if you make a mistake, you could really, really, really uh, mess up the integrity of the haircut. Um, and <laughs> I actually have a couple of stories of clipper over comb. One recently. Um, uh, this past Saturday, uh, I had a client doing clipper over comb, detailing a neck taper, and the clipper slipped up under the comb, moving a little too quick, whatever the case may be, lost focus for a second, the clipper slipped. Um, luckily, um, I was at a lower, I was at um, a lower part of the taper, so and the clipper blade was open so i didn't you know cause damage that wasn't easily fixed um but i do have a house call story where i was doing a house call for a client again doing clipper over comb finishing up and this time the blade was closed <laughs> and um again that clipper slipped under the comb and i cut a cut a hole in the head so <laughs> You just want to be careful. Um, take your time, move slow. You don't need to be super fast. You don't need to be speedy Gonzalez with this process. Take your time. The speed will come with time. Um, yeah, so just take your time. And as you can see, we switched to a smaller comb. And again, this is just more detail work, detailing that, that fade better. Um, and you'll also be able to see that I flipped the comb between the wide tooth side and the fine tooth side. And of course, that again is just more detail work. If I'm using the wide tooth side, I don't want to cut off um, that much hair. And that's really more of a um, blending detail, uh, blending bulk removal bulk removal feathering purposes if i'm going to if i'm switching back to the fine tooth side that's just to get more detailed work um, removing dark spots and you know just trying to get more detailed in the blend the idea of it obviously is like uh switching guards and also um the idea is like switching guards so the bigger the guard the less hair you're going to remove. The smaller the guard, the more hair you're going to remove. And also, um, how you cut across the comb is going to dictate um, how much hair comes off as well so i don't know if you saw but I, I caught i cut across the comb which is more um blending again um i'm, I'm removing the last hair and it's more of a, of a feathering technique if i'm going up and down on the comb i am um removing more hair and I'm just, you know, want, 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 wanting to get more detail. Excuse the stutter. I apologize. When we switch to the bigger comb, the wider tooth comb. That's because we're cutting more into the length of his hair and we don't want to remove much of anything. This is feathering. This is... Um, 
transitioning into the length of hair on top. Again, I'm not trying to remove much hair with this comb at this part of the head at all. I have no idea <laughs> what I have had to go through to uh, to get this to get this voiceover done. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't nothing insanely crazy, but the mic wasn't working. I think I have a short in my cord, so the mic wasn't working. And then I'm trying to record with the AirPods audio. That's trash. I'm trying to record through the audio directly through my MacBook. It's okay, but. I'm making noises that I don't like. Man. Now I'm stuttering in this take. Y'all just gonna have to get the stutter take. <laughs> That's a lot. So now we are, um, again, just more detail work. Shaping the high top. Not really a high top, but you know, you get it. Shaping the length of the hair on top. And also detailing the fade. Constantly combing. Just freehand shaping his hair, just following the natural shape of his head, not really putting too much pressure on the clipper at all, We're just kind of letting the clipper rest right on top of the hair and trimming the loose ends. For me, um, this is where the haircut kind of starts to come together when you get into this part of detailing. It just adds an extra cleanliness to the cut. Now we're coming in with the shears again, just a little bit more detail, a little bit more cleanup work. Again, same idea as with the clipper. We're not applying too much pressure. We're letting the shear do the work. You want, you want to let your tools do the work. You really never really want to apply too much pressure with anything. If you have to apply, apply a, a, a ton of pressure, then your shears need to be sharpened or your, your trimmers need to be calibrated, adjusted, sharpened, zero gap, however you need to get it done but um your tool should be should be the should be the things doing the work you're just you're essentially just guiding the tools so i need to get my shears sharpened anyway i really want some new shears if y'all run these views up for me i can get some i can get some new shears um so here we got our trimmer just doing some final detailing on our on the on the on the uh, bottom of the fade on the bald fade here a lot of barbers will use the shaver um, I don't unless the client requests here we're doing more detail work with the trimmer and the reason why we're using the trimmer is just because the blade is obviously uh, smaller, so it, it'll it'll get um, even more detail than with the clippers. And here is even um, when you want to be even more careful um, and focused when you're doing clipper overcomb, because then this is a trimmer, and if you slip with that trimmer. You know, yeah. Just 
telling this fade even more. Talking about everything back into place. Flipping this comb between the fine tooth side and the wide tooth side. Getting more detail. And again, um, I'm not posting these videos. These, these tutorials aren't to show that I'm some super skilled crafted barber and I'm trying to, you know, show how masterful I am. That's not what this is at all. Uh, for me, this is just another learning tool for myself as well. I, I, I do want to share my techniques and, and hopefully help somebody else get better. But for me, um, this is just something for me to also look at as well, to look back on and to critique myself and to critique the, the job that I've done and to get better. Um, because for me, I, my objective is to make sure my clients get the best haircut that I can possibly give them. Uh, so I'm always going to be looking back at these videos and uh, critiquing myself. For me, I look at this stuff as game tape. It's opportunity for me just to critique myself and 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 pay attention to all the little details. Um, and even in the next set of tutorials that 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 we do, um, I've incorporated some new techniques that I wasn't doing in this set of tutorials and the previous set of tutorials. So. Um, Again, this is just about evolution, getting better, and providing my clients with the best possible service. Um, as my shape-ups, I try to keep them as natural as possible. Um, I don't like to push anything back. I keep everything. Uh, I try to follow the natural flow of the hairline, and then if any adjustments need to be made from there, I make my adjustments. I try to have a very light touch, um, but again, you know, you don't want to scar and nick your clients. I, some of my clients do have scars. Sometimes I've, I've scarred myself as well. But again, you just got to be attentive to, to the details. Here, just, we're just doing the razor work. The final detail. Final detailing of the shape up. And I like to do a dry shave. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I use the spritz. Um, for me, the spritz helps. One, it helps uh, mitigate irritation on the client's skin because uh, it acts as like a, a, a another barrier. Um, but it also helps the razor glide smoothly as well. That you can also achieve that with a wet shave. But for me personally and what I want to achieve, I like the way a dry shave looks better. That does not mean that that is the right way. That doesn't mean that's the best way. That does not mean that's the only way. But that's just my way. Always want to make sure um, you're pulling that skin. Here, we're just applying our curling product. Massaging it in there. blow dry with the curl sponge making sure that it's locked in this is the cut low drop fade let me know what y'all think any tips or anything let me know like comment subscribe follow humble legend grooming studio follow humble legend of pearl i'm out